Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Will. I'm from Brisbane and I'm an artist. Today I'm going to do a painting of uh, an iconic moment that happened last year after Australia won the Cricket World Cup. Uh, I'll be painting Travis Head doing the speed dealers thing. Uh, now I thought in the video I'd talk a little bit about my relationship to the game Cricket because well, the game's very important to me, but also because there seems to be a, a definitive change in the culture of Australian cricket happening at the moment, which is something that I frankly just think is really good and worth talking about. Uh, I'm going to try to speak to both people who don't know cricket and those who do, which might be like a difficult line to tread, but I, uh, I'll try my best. And uh, if I tell you something you already know, I apologise in advance. And if I say something that you don't quite understand and needs more context on, I'll be happy to answer questions in the comments below. And you know, leaving a comment helps with the algorithm and that sort of stuff. So while you're there, if you could uh, like and subscribe, that'd be great. Uh, nice little call to action there. I'll give myself a pat on the back for that one. So. My relationship with cricket is quite a typical one. It started very young. My, my dad loved the game and he taught me how to play basically as soon as I could walk. Um, and as soon as I was old enough, I started playing you know, junior cricket or kanga cricket and then progressed through like the age groups and I basically never stopped really. Uh, and like every young kid in Australia, I grew up loving the Australian cricket team. But my dad being a New Zealander also raised me to love the Black Caps as well. So my allegiance has always been split a little bit. And I've gone back and forth as to which team I support when they, they play each other. But basically I would always end up going for the team who I thought seemed like more likeable people. <laughs> uh, it's basically what's he like as a bloke stuff, really. So, uh, and but for anyone watching who knows anything about world cricket, that uh, that's not the Australian cricket team. For the last like forty or fifty years, the Australian team has been viewed by every other cricket playing nation as an incredibly unlikable team. Uh, They've been hostile and aggressive and unsportsmanlike to any and all oppositions, both on and off the field a lot of the time, which is something I just really found ugly. And uh, as, a, as a result, I would lean more towards supporting New Zealand. And the Australian mentality to be aggressive towards opposition seems to have spawned for a, a number of reasons principally from an attitude within the Australian cricket team to win at all costs. Uh, by that I mean they, they held an attitude or belief that the most effective way to win a game of cricket was to make the opposition as uncomfortable as possible through mental degradation and just general unpleasantness. <laughs> In other words, being a cunt, really. But it also probably has much deeper roots in the fact that it seems to be tied to like general concepts of masculinity in, in this country. Uh, Australian men for a very long time have glorified the typical hard man. The man who both socially and emotionally rejects anything that could be possibly construed as weakness. Uh, the typical hard man is someone who shows no emotion except anger, who rejects kindness or intellectualism of almost any kind, and who also shows no interest in anything that is different from his peers in any way, uh, mostly in fear of being ostracized. And in days gone by, if a man did take an interest in anything that was different from his peers, for example, he preferred a different brand of beer, or heaven forbid didn't drink beer at all, or he dressed 
slightly differently or he took an interest in like art or something like that he would have been slapped with the label of ray unit and firmly pushed out of any social circles he was involved in essentially our cricketing forefathers were very conservative men who for whatever reason wanted to prove to themselves and everyone around them just how tough they were and there are much larger like overall reasons i guess that contribute to a, a national identity of masculinity but it was certainly perpetuated through like public figures and role models which you know in australia very much includes the australian men's cricket team but in something in the last few years has been changing within and around the, the culture of Australian cricket, which I'm honestly quite deeply proud of. Uh, and it's the embracing of the proverbial Ray unit. I, I believe that it's because of, of a number of like exceptional people who haven't been afraid to like stand up to the old guard and challenge the the notion and the importance of masculinity and like these exceptional people dare to be different you know they they see the game of cricket as as just that as a game and very importantly they don't mistake kindness for weakness the team itself play with the belief that you essentially don't have to be a cunt to win a game of cricket, which has unquestionably been proven true by essentially winning everything that they possibly could last year. And uh, and yet there will still be those who worship at the altar of the old guard, who think we need to be more hard and we need to get back to sledging like the good old days, you know. Social conservatism unfortunately runs too deep in this country for one team to change it entirely. But this team, in my opinion, is a decidedly huge step in the right direction for the culture. And then on top of the team itself, there are like a number of important figures off the field playing a huge role in bringing about change. Eloquent and insightful journalists and writers like Pete Lawler and Gideon Haig, who are contributing to a culture around the game that doesn't raise a collective eyebrow at anything close to intellectualism, intellectualism, Ooh, tough one. and the boys might be too bashful to accept their importance, but I, I do believe that the great cricketer and other comedians and podcasts are uh, not only helping to humanise elite cricketers, but are also uh, importantly providing the entire system with a level of like self-awareness that it just didn't have before. And on a, a very personal level, my cricket club, uh, Wests, has played an instrumental role in my life. It's It's helped me in numerous ways for a very long time and it was it feels like it was able to do that because it was full of just really kind people you know who encouraged me to be myself uh, and I if I was born during the heyday of our cricketing forefathers there is no doubt in my mind that I I simply would have been too scared of being like ostracized to admit to my club that I was passionate about art and either I, I wouldn't have played cricket or I wouldn't have pursued art. It would have been one or the other. So yeah, the, the motto has been, and it will always be, get rarer. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And uh, if you like the painting, I have some eight by 10 inch prints available on my website to purchase. Uh, so I'll leave a link to that in the description and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.